What's going on guys? My name's Victor and today I'm back with another After Effects tutorial and we're going to be covering one that's a couple years old. It's from Travis Scott's Sicko Mode music video and I know there's a million things to cover in that video but the one I'm specifically covering is on Drake's shattering face effect. So let's get into it. First things first, go ahead and open up your footage in After Effects. Here I have a shot of my friend Isaac from RDS during a music video that I shot. Basically, it's just a stationary shot of him being pretty still and just rapping, so I thought this would be a perfect clip to work on. I started by duplicating the footage a couple times. Throughout this effect, you're going to be duplicating it a lot, but for the sake of not cluttering up that timeline, I only duplicated it a few times to start out. So I made my top layer visible and the ones below are not visible. So basically we're going to start masking out what looks like glass shards because I want it to shatter like glass. So just make sure that your mask mode is set to add and then go ahead and start masking out those glass shards. So my method of making these glass shards is spacing them out throughout the screen and then making them jagged like glass. But the reason we're spacing them out is because we want them to be moving up or not moving all in separate places to create a little bit of depth to the effect. Now click on the second layer and mask out a couple more glass shards. But before you get too far in the masking, it's gonna help you a lot if you rename your clips so you don't get unorganized and you remember which one is which. I named the first layer Left 3D because that is a layer that I know I want to move slightly closer to the camera during the effect. I renamed the second layer that we just masked to Left Stationary because I don't want that to move at all. The third layer that we haven't masked yet, I named Left 3D 2 because I want those shards of glass to move close to the camera too, but I don't want it to move at the same rate as the first 3D layer. When I was masking the third layer, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't masking any part of the subject's face, so I would toggle on and off the layer to make sure that I'm not getting any of his face. Now that we're getting close to having the whole left side of the frame masked out with glass shards, you can go back and add more glass shards to the other layers to disperse them a little bit better. Okay, the left side's done now. You just need to repeat the exact same steps before the right side. All right, now that you have the left side and the right side all masked out, go ahead and highlight all of those layers and make them 3D by clicking that cube icon. At this point, we still have not touched the subject's face. Go back to the left 3D layer and now we're going to keyframe the position to move closer to the camera. If you forgot to make the layer 3D, you won't be able to adjust the Z position, which is what we need to do. I wanted to have this layer start just slightly closer to the camera than the rest, so I set a Z position value of negative 10 at the beginning. So make sure your position keyframes are on and then I scroll to the end of the effect and change the Z position to negative 120. And honestly, my values are not important because you can customize this effect to however you want. Now duplicate that layer that we just keyframed. And now on that layer that we just keyframed, go ahead and adjust the X and Y positions to create a slight offset. Your Z position is not going to change. Now we're gonna be adding a texture under these layers. I download this matte black texture from Google and I want these glass shards that are going to be moving to look a little three-dimensional like a metal canvas that's shattering. So make sure that matte texture is under the layer that you keyframed and the duplication so it's under both of them and then reposition and rescale it so that it fills up the space under those glass shards. In efforts to keep the texture lined up with the glass shards, I parented the texture to the bottom layer. Now we're gonna alpha matte that texture to whatever that bottom layer is called. So for me, it's left 3D. Now if we zoom in, you can see that the offset layer is now that texture. Feel free to reposition the bottom layer to look more 3D. If that offset is just slightly off, you know, it, it doesn't look like it's actually belonging to that shard of glass. So just kind of line it up and make it look like the dimensions are correct. Just make sure that you're inputting the same values at the beginning and the end of the clip. So now I just trim up the texture layer and then highlight both the bottom layer and the texture and pre-compose them and once again trim that clip up. Now go to your effects and presets and add drop shadow to the pre-composed clip. 
We now have to keyframe the shadow by altering the distance and softness. Just be aware of the direction dial in that drop shadow effect controls. It's pretty self-explanatory. You can move that dial to control where that shadow is pointing. Now because the first layer glass shards are already positioned a little bit above the others, I made sure to start the keyframes with a little bit of shadow and softness, and at the end of the clip added more distance and softness. Now repeat those steps on each layer of glass shard that will be moving. You don't have to add an offset texture or shadow to the layers that aren't moving. All right, now we need to mask out glass shards on the face. I made three different mask layers on parts of the face I wanted to fly completely out of frame and named them by the body part. Everything else was masked into layers that were named stationary because they won't be moving. Now we need to apply the same steps and principles on the sides to the face to make those moving glass shards 3D with that matte texture. If you notice one of the face pieces being shown below one of the side pieces, then just move the layer to the top of the composition. And then also when you're creating that texture offset to make it look 3D, just be aware of where you're offsetting it. It shouldn't be the same of that that was on the left or the right. After playing the video back, I saw that the shadows were really harsh and didn't fade like a shadow should. So I boosted the softness as well as keyframe the opacity to fade out at a certain point to make the shadows a little bit more realistic. All right, once you're done with all that, go ahead and highlight every layer and pre-compose it. Now we're going to keyframe a slow push-in. So I had the scale start at 105 and end at 115. Now we're gonna add a little bit of screen shake by holding Alt and clicking the position keyframe to type in the expression wiggle parentheses 20 comma five parentheses. Now for the final touch, you can add a photo or video to behind the glass shatter effect. I download a free Galaxy photo from Unsplash and then boom, we are done. All right, now if you wanna amplify this effect even more and make one of those face pieces move towards the camera and rotate and look 3D, then stay tuned. So I learned this effect from another YouTuber. He's been a huge help for me. You've probably already watched his channel. His name's Max Novak. He's a great resource for anyone who's into editing and VFX. So the first thing I did was deleting the matte texture for the eye and then I pre-composed the original eye layer that already has the movement keyframed onto it. Make that layer 3D and then go into the transform properties. Right click on position and click separate dimensions. Now hold alt and click only the Z position and type in index. Now you're gonna add the levels effect to the layer and darken it a little bit. With that layer highlighted, hold Command and press D to duplicate the layer. You're gonna wanna make a lot of duplications. Now that you've duplicated that layer a bunch of times, I go back to that very first one and delete the levels from it so it's not dark, it's all the ones under it that are dark. It basically will just help that extrusion stand out a little bit. Now go ahead and pre-compose all of those eye duplications. Go into the original eye layer and now we're going to have to keyframe for the rotation for X and Y to make it flip as it moves past the camera. And you might be noticing a problem with it being thrown off skew from where you originally keyframed it. If so, it's probably because the anchor point isn't set to the center of that mask die. If you click the anchor point tool and reposition the anchor to the center of the mask die and then re-keyframe the Z positioning to go past the camera, then you should be good and the rotation should be centered around the eye. And that is how you do Travis Scott and Drake's face shattering effect scene in sicko mode. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, leave me a thumbs up, comment what you thought down below, and subscribe if you haven't already. I would love to have you at this channel, and I'll see you in the next one.